Okay, guys. So, I welcome you to my presentation about the uh, GNU Radio runtime, and the subtitle is Reinventing a Very Fast Wheel. So, uh, Derek asked a question who doesn't know GNU Radio. I think there were a couple of people or, who never used it. This will be pretty specific to GNU Radio, but it might, may also apply to other digital signal processing frameworks. So, yeah, my name is Andre Rode. I'm yeah, I will introduce myself right now. Uh, I will first talk about the actual state of the GNU Radio runtime, so for the upcoming release of GNU Radio 3.8, what are new features or are there any? Uh, also, I will talk about uh, the GNU Radio runtime in the retrospective, so what features did we or did the previous developers add to the runtime and how that, that, did, did that come out in the end? And also then the new stuff, so future of the generator runtime. So I talked with at least Marcus and Basti, so we had some like thoughts and what can we do to improve the whole situation to make things faster or yeah, to improve on other optimization goals. So yeah, I'm actually a double E student uh, at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. My primary focus is on DSP and also communication engineering. Uh, I also currently run the Radio CI, so the little billboard thing that is building all the pull request stuff and also I'm hurting the web infrastructure so you can see nice things on the website. Uh, yeah, I s started using and contributing to Radio very recently so 2016 is just about two years ago, so I'm pretty young in that respect. Uh, but I have a great interest and will hopefully contribute more and more to the radio infrastructure. Yeah, and I also have fun with SDR sometimes. So, yeah. So, what's the current state? So, for the upcoming 3.8 release, the runtime does not contain like a super new shiny feature we want to like push people to use. It contains a lot of dependency bumps, so the whole GNU Radio project is now porting to Qt5 and Python 3 and GTK3 and like a lot of stuff is going on but no like real shiny feature. And this raises the question, are we yet done? So is this whole runtime scheduling thing done and we can now focus on only doing DSP from now on. And unfortunately, this doesn't mean we can't, can stop developing like the runtime and scheduler and stop improving basically. We have to yeah, improve it. And Green Radio is a piece of software basically electrical engineers and communication engineers and DSP engineers are attracted to. So most of the time people work on what they like to do and that's like DSP stuff. Runtime is like, it's more computer science-y, so you have to do scheduling, you have to do buffer passing or like buffer handling and that's like a necessary evil but you, yeah, you have to do it to get your samples around. So, how did we come to to the current state? So I have gone gone through the Git history to like see when new features in the runtime can came in. So basically, Gnu Radio started out as a simple sample processing framework. So you put in data on the one side, you get data out on the other side without like other stuff messing with it. And then. 2000 and it was single threaded so it was okay at that time for the goal Eric and other people had to solve the to solve so uh, yeah just in 2008 a multi-threaded scheduler the thread per block scheduler was added to the core and then also message passing was merged so message passing is something entirely different compared to the simple s streaming. So you're not just like continuously streaming samples. You want to basically have like packetized data or like not back pressure your data. Then also 
a very nice feature like the tagging capability was merged so you can now add metadata to your to your samples like which frequency amplitude uh, amplitude but frequency other phase offsets you measured to correct for them so it was a nice thing and also control port so this was added to like introspect the flow graph to have like also performance counters to see which blocks are performing well, which blocks are like holding up the full processing. Yeah, so it continued and like for the next release, the single threaded scheduler is thrown out. So it's already merged in next. So there will, won't be a single threaded scheduler. So we are, we are left with the thread per block scheduler now, which is doing a very good job. But may there may, might be some improvement still so achievements right radio is like the biggest open source dsp pro project used we today we had like five pro well, four or five projects using it and it's really good at what it's doing right now so the back pressure driven ar architecture is great you can do the sample processing without hassle you only have to focus on your own block, so the simple block API. If you want to write a fur filter, you, you just focus on what you have to do to filter the samples, not how to pass around data or to get your data from your radio and then somehow manage to catch up. So this is all done by Green Radio. It's great. Also, the yeah, strict block boundaries, so blocks are not interfering with each other in terms of yeah, concurrency issues or locking or something. If you just do like sample processing, you, you don't have a problem. And this leads to a lot of new projects. And yeah, we, today we saw some and there are still hundreds of other projects and companies using Green Radio. So shortcomings. One thing you might notice when you run like a large flow graph with a lot of sample process uh, sample processing blocks is cache invalidation so you have like say a hundred blocks doing stuff and then the thread per block scheduler he will spawn a thread for each block and then calling the work work functions of each block the grady basically hands off the hard work to the os and the os is then taking the threads and schedules them on cores and on hyper threads and is passing memory around and arranging everything, which is, the OS is good at that, but the OS doesn't have like the information, how does your flow graph look like? Does it make sense to like keep like one, one stream on one thread or one CPU to use the cache and not like uh, invalidate your cache all the time and then to have to move around between different CPU blocks. Also we have a lack of tests for core features so if people like submit bug reports and fixes for them for core features like tags or, or message passing or something it's not always clear if that only fixes that bug or if it also in, opens up a new path of bugs coming in so that that's a bad thing also uh, the runtime api is sometimes a little yeah hidden so it, it, you can use just the normal features and you will be fine you won't run into issues but if you start like using extend extensive hidden features basically and then we we remove them or we update them or something happens uh, your blocks break and prob one of the resolutions later will be we want to add like first the API and then like implement it so we have a clear clear line where to go this probably resulted in just the organic grown code so you you saw the the timeline here so it's like eight to nine years just for the these features but the, the development started earlier so like 10 years of code it's it's quite natural to have like some organic structures and missing missing docs so we also have a lot of lacking thread safety for direct method calls so if you have like your flow graph in python you can actually call into blocks and 
trigger and, and call functions, but most of them are not really threat safe and we have no real means to protect that right now. And also we have a lot of varying code quality, so a lot of contributors over the years contributed different parts, so that's also quite natural. So for the varying code quality, I just like plotted a coverage statistic. So in the top, we have the DSP things like GR filter and GR analog, which are very good tests, tested quite well. So about 80% of the code lines run during tests. And then somewhere in between, you have the runtime, which is sometimes tested by accident because it also get, gets run when you run anything in Radio. But there are also actually tests in the runtime but it, it's about 60% here. And then we have like a, a whole lot of blocks which is not runtime related, but in the Gnarelio project with, which are like not tested at all during our normal CI tests. So people encounter bugs and they report them, but that's, yeah. And then some other shortcomings people encounter and also solve in their own project is like the integration with other heterogeneous computing like if I on, don't only have like one CPU, I want to use GPU, I want to use G, an FPGA or other DSP coprocessors, there's no, no way of handling this, these custom DMA buffers in Green Radio. So people come up with solutions, at least for the GPU side, there are at least two or three projects who implemented OpenCL and even had buffer passing between blocks. Since the runtime doesn't know anything about this, was like finger crossing. I, I, I just pass between one GPU and then keep my data on it so I can use the maximum performance. But also like cloud or say remote computing, I want to hand off. So I want to run a flow graph and I want to hand off certain parts to other instances of my like AVIs insta cluster or something. This is pretty hard to do in Greenradio right now, so you have to you, you can, for example, use 0MQ and then have one end implemented and then like run another flow graph on the other side and then you have to manually make sure to everything runs at the same time and is passing the data correctly. Also, an uh, issue is like low latency applications. Uh, this is also a lot of work was done by Basti, Basti and Blössel to for the Wi-Fi stuff and basically he had uh, he also looked into other applications or frameworks and there was this uh, Microsoft Sora which al already implemented this like 10 years ago and there are also s other issues with the current implementation I skip a little bit to what we thought of for the future of the Radio runtime so first I want to compare to other similar projects so I already mentioned Microsoft Sora uh, what we mean to design and what's the timeline for this, for our thoughts. So first question is, do we need to improve the runtime itself at all? Can't we use just already implemented yeah, processing frameworks or other computation frameworks to do the job, even in other signal processing frameworks maybe? So we have, I, I, I did it's not a finished list, but some projects who are pretty similar to what Radio is doing. So Sora and there's this SRS LTE, which are pretty application specific. So one is about Wi-Fi, the other one is about LTE, obviously. And also some other stuff, but no other project really matches the the, the goal of Radio to have like this generic processing and also uh, of the existing ecosystem. So for Green Radio there is already a big community and a lot of people doing own projects on top of the framework and basically we think we have to still com continue improving the runtime itself and can't just use anything else as of right now. So what are the challenges that are not solved currently. So I did like a list of shortcomings. So those are the things we think uh, need to improve and to continue yeah, to, to provide Green Radio with a path forward for like new other 
developments in, in this regard. And yeah, what should an API look like? So that's where like all of you come in also to, to give us more hints or like tell us what you want to see, what, what's, what's the current problems or struggling with the runtime. We see some projects, not all of them are open source, of course, some are like hidden between, uh, after, hidden in, in company walls. Um, what do we, yeah. Mm. And also, how can, can we keep stuff around without reinventing the wheel, like Ms. Light said? We, we don't have like question, uh, answers for all of these questions, so we're still in the process of working stuff out. And uh, first thing is design theory. So there is already a thing called like concurrent computing, so that it's, des it's describing what Gnarady is doing if we leave out all the digital signal processing and uh, radio related stuff. Basically, what we try to solve is concurrent computing. And there's uh, quite some ways to describe this from an academic's point of view. So there's like the actor model is a word. There are, for example, Petrinets or other process calculi they are called. So we can ca come up with something that matches what Radio is doing and try to apply that. And also the design goals in the end, they vary because you can optimize for latency. That means in a practical sense, you have to squeeze down your, your buffer sizes very, to, to very small sizes. Or you want to optimize for throughput. For example, with a GPU, you need a couple of thousand samples to do like real processing. OK, so our design goals are obviously API before implementation, so we are now in the process of designing and coming up with a good API for people to use in their own projects and also throughout the Radio tree, so there are also a lot of blocks there. We want to have configurable scheduling inside the runtime, so that means basically you can optimize with very little effort or with not the extensive knowledge of the runtime for latency, but also can optimize for throughput, not only about with buffer sizes, but with other scheduling paradigms. Also include the buffer management, so there was already some work done back in 2013, which didn't come into like the core, unfortunately. Also have some more flow graph introspection and with that also remote computation. So those two are also pretty close together. If we get better introspection, we can also have more scheduled uh, offload to other blocks and have this cross network communication basically going. And also we want to keep all the nice features we accumulated over time. So we obviously don't want to lose multi-threading. We want uh, to support the synchronous streaming, which is the, the bread and butter for Gnu Radio, and also, yeah, other features we have. So, most importantly, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to continue with what Gnu Radio has accomplished, and also we want to foster other FOSS projects' work to keep the maintenance low, so we don't want to implement everything ourselves. So, using existing libraries for, for example, there's, there's an C++ library for the actor model, which we might or might not use to implement a scheduler or other projects implementing cross-network communications and, yeah, a lot of things to, to look at. And, yeah, we are actually, the, right now we're at the step writing down the API. Now, then we want to agree on a technology for implementation and yeah, implement the API. And, and the last point is basically probably the hardest, is gluing the existing thing together and may, giving people a path forward to have their out-of-tree modules use the new features and everything we want to provide. So for those things, we also need feedback. So basically you can write me or Marcus an email or Bastian and keep the discussion going or post. Uh, I can also probably will post on the Discuss Radio mailing list 
to keep this going. Yeah. If you have any questions about what I told you today, I'm, I'm happy to answer or try to answer. I'm also available with the email address or with my nick on Slack or IRC. And yeah, we hope to keep everything in everyone here in the loop and the whole community to move forward. Okay. challenges that we always faced with QA was uh, hardware and non-X86 processors. Do you have a like, plan or thoughts in mind for that? Or so, hardware, I mean, like, you know, there's no user potential yeah, yeah, right. to our CI servers. So one thing to tackle those problems would be basically writing mock modules or something to, to mock up the other side so you can it should be possible. So other projects are also doing basically mock modules of hardware devices or other databases or something to, to mock the hardware. This would be a way to improve that or, uh, and the other thing was... Uh, uh, so we were doing a lot of ARM development for embedded systems and we don't really do good QA. Uh, so there's also ways to run like QEMO or something on, on ARM. I, I haven't looked into that right yet but this could be a path forward to improve like the support for that and all the you know, differences to x86. Can I just make a comment? I, I would, I would say, I'd say the, the hardware driver people <laughs> <that's me. laughs> um, should be uh, like a, yeah, you know, could, could also help with the, the mark. Like it, there should be there should be a way to test UHD without having to use something like that. That would be that would be really useful. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? All right. As you go out, take trash with you. And take it as far from here as you can. There's the trash can filling up. Any, any more questions? Yeah, we have, we have time for two Yeah, we have time. I'm just yeah, trying to make my life easier later. You can just. I just wait. Uh, okay, I, I, I have a question. Yeah. So, um, you said, like, type. Can you, like, do you have a question too? Yeah. Okay, then can you just, like, go back to your. <laughs> Because the camera is still running, right? so this is the middle of the session. Um, the, you actually said timelines, but there is no like time. Is it because you don't know how much time you will actually have? Or that's that's a problem because every one of us three who already thought of that, we all have other things to do and don't get like paid full time to to work on the runtime and the scheduler. So we have to like scramble time to to work on that in the free time. Also. There, there's like no no real timeline to finish thinking about the th things and start implementing. So we need to nail that down pretty soon, probably. And also, like um, we should use the grab process for a lot of this. Yeah, yeah. but that doesn't in, like it doesn't match too well to the, the academic kind of research that we will have to do first. I uh, yeah, I have to comment on that.